Hello everyone, I am Siddhartha. Currently we are in the first module of our deep learning course and in this first module we are discussing about the basics of deep learning and basics of neural network. In the previous videos we have seen what is meant by an activation function, math behind it and how you can calculate these activation function value in Python. In today's video we are going to discuss the three main aspects of training a neural network such as loss function, optimizer, forward and backward propagation. So before getting started with these topics, if you really like my channel and if you think that you are learning something from this, I kindly request you to subscribe it and share it to someone whom you think that this will be helpful. So with that being said, let's get started. So uh, in order to understand the concepts of loss function, optimizers and these propagation steps, I think that it's, it's really important for us to clearly understand how a neural network would work. So let's consider this simple example. Let's say that we want to build a neural network that is capable of classifying an image as cat or a not a cat. So this is like a binary classification neural network that we are building. So how this neural network would work is you can think about this as this neural network as a team of experts and this team of experts are going to learn to classify this image. And there are like individual team members here and these individual team members are nothing but the neurons that we have in all the individual layers. So if you consider the input layer, uh, we pass some data, right, some data from this image to this input layer. So we are going to split this image data, pass all those piece of information to individual neurons and this input layer is going to pass the information, whatever data it has gotten from this image it's going to pass it to the next layer which is this hidden layer one it's not it's nothing but we would split this image data into different pixel values and send it to the input layer right just like that and then in the hidden layer uh, these neurons would have the ability to learn specific information uh, specific information from the image let's say that one neuron has this uh, kind of responsibility to understand what's the color of a cat is going to be and what's the shape of its head and so on so it tries to find all these different features from this image uh, data that it is learning from and again there are a lot of calculations happens in order to find these features like we kind of multiply it with weight and we add this bias summation and then we have this critical part known as activation function so you can think about this activation function as let's say we have a team member an expert who is looking at uh, the shape of the head of the cat and if they think that that information is going to be helpful they are going to pass it to the next uh, layer's neuron. If not, they won't send it. That's what activation does. So we also call this as firing of neurons, where if information is useful, it's going to fire it by passing one or some value. If it's not useful, it's going to pass the value zero. So this is what we call again as firing of neurons. And this is like the base concept of how activation function would work. So all these kind of things happen in the hidden layer. And then we have an output layer that says whether it is a cat or it, if it is like not a cat and then we would have a evaluator who says that your prediction is right or your prediction is wrong and now uh, this data flows back through this neural network and here based on this supervisors or the evaluators input the model is going to learn how to make better predictions so this is like the entire concept of like how neural network would work so the data flows through this it makes a kind of a prediction it can be a wrong prediction at the start because it's not trained yet it doesn't know the pattern of these cat images so of course it's going to make a wrong predictions so as the training goes by it tries to find whether it is making a right prediction or not and based on its prediction it's going to train itself or learn from the data itself on uh, making better predictions so this is where the concept of loss function optimizes kind of helpful and the training process is what kind of happens uh, you know if we have this forward and back backward propagation right so this propagation basically happens in your neural input training so let's try to understand this uh, i mean if you are already familiar with the machine learning concepts you probably would have uh, kind of learned about this loss function but i'll just give you some definition that you can look at a loss function quantifies how well a model's predictions match the actual target values in the training data. So yeah, that's about it. So it's it basically loss function gives you the difference between uh, the model's prediction and the actual target values. So we are quantifying its, its performance, like how well it's performing. And as I said, it's the difference between the prediction and the actual values. 
and if this difference is more that means the model is not predicting correctly right so the difference is huge so we are saying that the model is not good and if this difference is low that means the model is predicting correctly that means the prediction is as close as the actual target so this is what we need to kind of uh, try to achieve in the training the goal of training a deep learning model is to minimize this loss function value because we need this to be minimum so we are minimizing this loss function which helps the model learn the underlying patterns in the data and make accurate prediction on new unseen data so we know right so if loss decreases we know that the accuracy is going to increase because now the model's predictions are like uh, you know close to the actual target itself right so that's what we are trying to do in the uh, training and then this is like a graph you probably would have seen right when you're training your neural network in tensorflow or other models we try to plot this uh, loss value against the epoch so your y-axis would represent your loss value and the x-axis would represent the epoch number so when we start at the initial epochs we would have like a large loss value and as the training goes by uh, your loss value is going to decrease in an ideal case right so it's going to decrease so we are trying to minimize this loss and then we have like a few examples of these loss function are mean squared error mean absolute error in the case of mean squared error we are going to square this find the difference and in the mean absolute error this is like the absolute difference of the prediction and the actual target so these two are used in regression problems and then we have this cross entropy loss which is used in the case of classification problem so when it's a binary classification we are going to use uh, binary cross entropy and when it is like a multi-class classification problems when you have more than two classes you are going to use categorical cross entropy so that's about it so we will discuss about like other loss functions and other things in detail in a later part of this course but for now you can just understand the basics of loss function few examples should be good so that's about loss function so it's the difference between the prediction and the actual target and our focus main focus is to minimize this and how we are going to minimize this loss function is using an optimizer so in neural networks optimizers are algorithms used to minimize the error function or loss function by adjusting the weights and biases of the network during the training process so you can also refer to this loss function as error functions so as i said optimizers are algorithms that are going to minimize this loss function by adjusting the weights and biases of this network so when we initially start training a neural network right so we would initiate the weights and bias value and again it can be any random values but we usually start with zeros so all the weights would be given the value zero and all the bias will also be given the value zero and again it tries to make a prediction now this optimizer right so let's say let's consider the first iteration where all your weights where weight value and bias value are zero now we know that when all the weights and bias are zero it's not going to make a correct prediction let's say in the case of cat image prediction it says it's not a cat and the loss value is also more now it's going to change its weights and bias repeatedly so that it can build a model that's like really good in predicting this particular use case so this is what happens in an optimizer so where we are kind of trying to update the weights and bias okay so the optimizers play a crucial role in updating the model parameters in a way that helps the model converge to the optimal solution. Uh, convergence is like a really important term. Convergence is nothing but uh, the point where you have like the optimum weights and bias. Optimum weights and bias means you have like the minimum loss value possible. So yeah, that's like the uh, convergence. And again, few examples of this widely used optimizers are stochastic gradient descent, just like the gradient descent that we have right in machine learning tries to find this global uh, minimum value loss value is minimum and then we have this momentum which kind of works a bit differently yeah. where it tries to move the parameter values the weight value or the bias value where uh, you know your loss function increase i mean the change in or decrease in loss function is higher so it tries to move in that direction so that's why we call this as momentum so it moves in whatever direction loss function increases rapidly and then we have another widely used optimizer which is adam so if you have worked on some basic neural networks you probably would have used this adam optimizer and it stands for adaptive moment estimation so it kind of uh you know it, it it's kind of encapsulates this momentum and we also have this other kind of uh loss function called as rms prop and so on so it kind of tries to take advantage of 
these different uh, optimizers and work on it. So the thing about Adam is that it can adapt the learning rate for individual parameters and it can change it. So it's kind of like really, really helpful. And again, as I said, it's like widely used uh, because of its ability to give like better models, not in all the cases, but in most cases. So that's about like few examples of optimizers and what it is. So, so far, uh, I just want you to understand what is meant by a loss function. So we know that it's the difference between your true value and your prediction. And our goal in training is to minimize this. And how we are going to minimize this is by optimizer, right? Uh, it's going to, our optimizer would work is look at the loss function. And based on the loss function value, it's going to change its weight and bias uh, by calculating something called as gradients. Gradient is nothing but uh, how much your loss function value is going to change if you change a weight or a bias value. If I have to write it right, so let me take this pin. So it's it's all like partial derivatives. So it's like called differential calculus. So let's say that this is like a partial derivative of let's say loss function value. So let's call this L as the loss function. So derivative of let's call this as W1. So what this means is how much your loss function is going to change when you change the weight w1 so similarly you have different weight values right so this is what we call as a gradient by looking at this gradient uh, it would change all these weight values in bias value until it reaches this convergence where you have this optimum parameters when i say parameters it's nothing but the weights and bias okay now let's discuss about this forward propagation and backward propagation and where the concept of loss function would optim and, uh, and optimizes would help this so here we have discussed this right so we have this input data which is the cat image in this case and this image data flows through the neural network and we give a prediction and then let's say we have a supervisor when we say supervisor it's nothing but the true labels that we have so we compare the predictions made by the model with the true labels and from this uh, again this step is called as forward propagation or you can also call this as forward pass and once we go through this forward pass we would get a prediction and then we calculate this loss and uh, use the you know uh, op relevant optimizers let's say that we are using an adam optimizer so it's going to look at the gradients and update the weights and bias so this is the part where your parameter value is going to change so it gets updated in your backward propagation so right so this is what these two things mean so this is like a very critical step uh, so in, in the training of neural network two step happens one is forward propagation where your model is going to give a prediction and based on the loss value we are going to change the weights and bias in the step of backward propagation by kind of using a uh, using an optimizer and this doesn't happen for single images individual image for individual image we won't change the weight and bias so we would take a batch let's say there are 32 images in a batch you would mention this as one of the hyper parameters in the coding of neural network so if you have seen my use case videos so we would have used some hyper parameter called as batch size so we usually use batch size like 32 64 128 256 all these powers of 2 so we would use that so when we use a batch size of 32 that means 32 images for, uh, flow through this forward propagation we get the prediction for all these 32 images find the entire loss function value again you also call this as cost function but we don't have to kind of confuse with that now so you find the loss function for all those 32 images and again calculate the gradients update your weights and bias again next pass the next 32 images the next batch do the same thing update the weights and bias so do this until your entire epochs is done so you have to do this for all the batches and then you also have like epochs right so you do this step repeatedly and once your epoch is done you probably are going to have like a better neural network that kind of gives you more accurate prediction so that's about the concept of loss function uh, optimizer forward propagation and backward propagation where uh, in the step of backward propagation your model looks at the loss value and using an optimizer it's going to update the weights and bias okay so i hope everyone is clear until this point and that's it from my side for this video and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching